horse is looking somewhere long enough, what's its feet do? It goes towards its thoughts. This is the hard part of training, is, is in its and it's and it's been through it the whole way. Is what happens when you're anxious? What happens when you don't understand something? What do you do? Okay. You lead up, yeah. First of all, put your thoughts to the rope. The rope is probably, as I said. Um, like I was talking about the President of the United States, okay? The rope, if I was the President, the rope overrides me, okay? So whatever the rope says, the rope says. Even if I said don't do it, the rope says do it, all right? Yeah. So it be, could be a simple thing like this, yeah? Whatever the rope says, see, she's thinking, do I listen to the president or do I listen to the rope? Okay, so the rope overrides my superior decisions, no matter what. Okay, and that's, that's, that's training for a horse in life. Okay. That's safety because one day she'll be tied in the float and you'll be outside the float and she won't be able to get you if she's tied up. And I'll tell you something else that happens. I've heard this happen before. Something that happened in a, in a it's only, it hasn't happened to me, but it's happened to someone else. Okay, the horse pulled back, that slipped over the chest bar and what's happened? Got caught in a little notch between the where the pins go in, and the rope just pulled tight in there and halfway off the horse float, got stuck, yeah? And the horse was trying to get off, and the rope was stuck in the horse float. So what's it do? Panics, and another time a horse was unloading off a horse float, and for some reason, that rope did one of those magical half hitches that just, you can never throw it, but they do it. And that tightened up on the chest bar, okay? And that was just an accident. So that's why I say, I may be the president, but this has got more power than me. Yeah? Because um, I sometimes drop a rein accidentally, I sometimes do things, so listen to the reins, okay? Now this is hard for her, but I guarantee a horse bloat's hard. One of the hardest things I'll ever go into. You know, and, and I see, that the thing I get a little worried about in training these days is, um, we make the whole world quiet so the horse can learn something and then we forget to actually teach the horse confidence through trouble, yeah? Or confidence through anxiety. If you make the float very quiet when you teach them to load, well, chances are it's gonna rattle like anything when you drive out the gate. Yeah. So you didn't set them up for anything except for going, holy cow, I didn't think this was part of the deal. The fact that she's came here on a truck and she's traveled as a start, but she hasn't travelled in a little coffin like that, yeah? She hasn't pulled my arm out of my socket, has she? So she's, she's learning very well, you know, because done, you've done a good job on getting it to lead up a little, yeah? Good girl, now we go find the float. Because she's got to engage with it a little bit first before you put her on. You can't just use the discipline that I showed you in rope skills and leading just to force them on, because they've got to travel in it and they've got to stand on that floor. So they have to engage with it to sort of actually find out their own. Like when a horse walks through a gully that's, you know, muddy, if they don't engage with it, they rush through it. If they engage with it, they walk carefully through it. The people who force their horses through, their horses forever jump. The people who allow them to think about it, well, their horses learn to walk quietly through scary things, yeah? But they've got to engage with that float. So they've actually thought, can I do it myself? Okay, so I've got to give it that much time. So I'm just walking past this float, kind of getting closer and closer. She's choosing how far she moves away from it because I've given her enough rope to do that, yeah? I'll even walk on here, because she's going to hear that sound too a fair bit. 
as I'm walking past there, I'll just walk past there and show that sound. She says, that's a little scary. But I tell you what, that's not as scary as when I wave that flag kind of thing, is it? She'll be making that sound. But if she's heard that sound a little first, then it won't be such a big thing. Now I'm just going to stand here for a little. See her gauging it like she's looking from side to side. She knows I'm in here. She's a very curious mare, isn't she? And she knows how to follow a feel now, so she knows where the feel's going. Good girl. Good girl. She's checking that thing out the side there. She's got her feet really close to it. She's maybe going to check out down the below and see what that ramp's all about. That's all stuff that we've got to let them do. So you've got to have a certain level of obedience and understanding to do anything with a horse. But then you've got to give them time to sort it out in their own mind. So if she kind of... Good girl. So what I'm going to do there, I'm going to say that's really, really nice. And I'm going to take her away from it and say first lesson. Yeah, so oh, actually, no. We know she goes forwards and backwards, but there's a saying that I try and teach people, and that saying is, is you never load a horse until you taught them to unload, right? And people say, well, how do you do that? Because how do you teach them to unload? You've got to get them in to teach them to unload. And I say, no. Well, that was a little unloading lesson, wasn't it? Just there, just walk one step away from the ramp softly. So I'm going to teach her to unload first. Good girl. That's kicking a ramp for the first time. Kicking that ramp a few times will teach her where that ramp is and maybe to put a foot on it. Now I'm going to take her up to that edge a few times so she knows where that edge is, so she knows next time that she can step up to it. But what's going to start to happen is, is I'm going to teach her to load her hind feet more than her front feet. Um, good girl. I'm going to go a little further in here. Good girl. So she knows where that edge is now. So I'm going to say, okay. Wake up. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. So if I saw her falling asleep on the rope, I'd just tap that flag on my leg a little and say, wake up. Good girl. See, that was her trying to put a foot up, wasn't it? Oh, that was leaning. Wake up. Wake up. Good girl. Yeah, that's the first hurdle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you can put your foot on that, can't you? Good girl. So that was the, that's, imagine that's the first jump of teaching a young horse to jump. Okay, now do you think she cleaned that jump nice and smooth? I don't. I, th I, I think she didn't clean that very good, did she? She could learn how to jump that jump so much smoother and softer. So, so I I'm not happy that she, she loaded on there well enough. And I don't think she's happy that she loaded on there well enough to be confident with it, yeah? Oh, she still balks at the jump, doesn't she? It's only a little jump, so... Think towards the jump, think towards the float. That's the first jump, isn't it? Now, come back off that jump again. Because I think that time she, she bowled the jump over as she went over it. That was a better jump. Good, she's going to be a jumping horse before the time the day's out. Okay? If they can't walk over a pole, you don't send them over Cavaletti, yeah? That's what we're saying. So that's the first good girl. 
And I might do that 10 times until I think she's doing that soft with confidence that she's placing her feet nice and softly. And her thoughts are thinking in here, good girl. Good girl. That was a pretty good jump, I reckon she'll make a show horse. Good girl. So why I say jump is I just imagine there's little lines along here all the way in. And if any one of those jumps is a brace, then I take them back and back over it again. Because if you get them over that jump and they get right in there, chances are they're going to jump backwards over the jump twice as fast. Okay, so that's the moral of unloading a horse before you load them. Make sure they've walked over and back over that jump softly, thoughtfully, until we're also in control, but she's also, she's in control of emotions, but we're in control of the feel and she can follow that feel quietly, yeah? Because it's not about them just going on when they're ready or going off when they're ready. Sometimes they have to stop when they're not ready and step forward when they're not ready. But for now, it's a confidence building lesson, isn't it? Good, so I'm gonna start making another jump about here somewhere, I think, because I think she's doing pretty good there. But there's gonna be another jump which is leading those hind feet, isn't it? Just something to think about. Why wouldn't I put the flag behind her and, and tap her on the rump? Won't make her think about it. It'll make her thoughts go back there. I don't want her thoughts back there, worrying about what she's gonna move off to get in here. I wonder, I wanna know her thoughts are in here, worrying about what she's going into. Okay, when I pull on a rope, the reason I bang the flag here is because I want her to look forward to a feel, not look back to a feel, and that's why I don't use a stick up their rump or a britching rope, because it just puts their thoughts in the wrong direction. And then when you pull on them here, they don't throw their thoughts forward as well. So you know now when I pull on here, you see a thoughts, they're in the right direction, aren't they? Thinking forwards. And where does it, when a horse is looking somewhere long enough, what's its feet do? goes towards his thoughts. It's like, isn't that the law? That's not the basic law of physics, is it? No, that wouldn't be physics. That's just, just the law of nature. If you look at something long enough, chances are you'll go over there and have a... Good girl, no lag. Now, what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna make my, my other jump as the hind feet, okay? So, leading's not leading two feet, leading's leading four feet, the thoughts forward and four feet, it's not a two feet lesson. So to know that you're leading four feet, lead the hind feet. See how I'm not leading four feet there? She trails the hind feet back there, doesn't she? See that there? Okay, so my lesson now is to say four feet. Four feet. Good girl. Two feet, not, see that's a two feet leading lesson. So front feet are stretching and the back feet aren't. So my next hurdle is teaching her to lead her hind feet there. So imagine we're back at the start again, looking at her front feet. So those are her front feet now. And when I press on that lead rope, I'm looking at feeling those move as soon as I pull that lead rope, yeah? Not the front feet move and then the back feet. I want the back feet to move in time. So I'm just leading her over that hurdle there. Now there's a lot going on in here and I'm gonna give her a chance to think about this float but I'm gonna just take her back to where she's been before and have another go. I'm not just gonna lure her in further and further and further. I'm gonna take her back to where she's been and go back over that same thing over and over until she feels like she's actually okay about it, yeah? And I don't think she's okay about it. Her head's getting in this scary space now. And she's kinda like, good. Getting closer at leading those back feet. Good girl. She's getting a little crooked there, but that's okay because we can get her uncrooked with the... This is 
is a back feet lesson, little one. Hey, that's those back feet moving. Happens a lot that they get crooked. Okay. I don't bother too much about stuff as long as they're finding my hand and just following the feel. Okay. You know, we stop, we reset, we put their hips back in the right spot, the world stops and then we go again and the horse starts to figure out pretty quick that if they put their hip over there, we'll stop, we'll reset them and start again. So they actually learn to put their hip over there, don't they? Good girl. If she can load with one eye in and over there and sort of not run off sideways, well I'm kind of happy with that. It's just an angle that she's going to end up on. Luckily for Helen's float, it's got no grabby bits on it that gets a foot stuck on, you know, so some floats are a bit different like that. Good girl. Why don't we walk across the float, hey? You walked across it. Good girl. That was a good hold on her behalf. She could have jumped straight through me there because she's standing on a ramp all on herself, all by her, all on her own. Uh, stop there. This is important. Good girl. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty scary, isn't it? Now let's try again. She doesn't like the walls either side of her. But she's doing good. I don't let him stand too long at this stage on the float. I don't let him stand and go, good horse, think about that weight, think about that weight. Because chances are some horses, you let them think too long and they choose to back off. Before she even chooses to back off, I actually back her off and say, thanks for that. This is how you back off before she decides to run off. I don't want to have to pull her forward too many times from pulling back if I can help it. So I'll let her, I'll let her stand on there a little longer and think about it. Once she showed me, she can back off softly Come forward softly, back off softly, come forward softly. Good girl, might let her stand there for a second, and then I'm just going to bring her back through. Now, do you know why you taught her to lead by quietly without teaching her to run out on a circle? Because one day you might need it. Yeah? And this is the day that you need those things, isn't it? Yeah, just to get her to lead by softly past our shoulder like that. Some people revert to putting the flag on their hip because they never spent enough time teaching them to lead by. Okay, so leading by is a very important lesson, isn't it? She's squashing me a little bit there, but that's okay. She's a little nervous, but she's not trying to kill me. She's not like being aggressive or she's just frightened and that's where she feels. Good girl, now I'm going to let her think about that. She survived it. No, no, no. I know you want to go somewhere else. So now my job now is to do what I do with Carol's horse. Is to get it centred. She's doing really good about being worried and following that feel. I'm really happy with that. But what I'm worried about is she can't control her anxiety here and she's not centering, okay? So I'm going to distract her a little and bring her thoughts back to here. This is what happens, isn't it? You remember how she starts getting a bit funny and swishy when we were doing those uh, brace lessons. See those hind feet start? When we were trying to work on that brace on her, she was moving her hind feet a lot, yeah? I don't want anything. That's why I'm not ready to put her on yet, yeah? If I sort of got a little too greedy and thinking she's doing a really good job, she might start doing that in there. 
I'd rather her doing that out here than doing that in there, okay? She's got to learn to centre. Just learn to centre. Your thoughts are away. Your thoughts are away. Anxiety's making it happen, I know. No, no, no. I don't want you anywhere. Just think about me. This is an interesting mare because when we were doing that brace, that jaw brace lesson, as soon as she started getting a little flustered in that feel, when she had a brace, she'd start kicking and swishing, kicking and swishing. No, there was nothing to kick at. It was just a, her, her reaction to, to anxiety hanging onto a brace and the anxiety of it. See, the, the thing is, as some people say, if you just take the flag away, she'll have time to settle and things like that. The problem is, is I need her a little bit of that anxiety to teach her to think and then she can settle because there's times we can't take the anxiety away and if the horse doesn't learn to think through it and find an answer then basically we haven't set her up to, to be in there on their own kind of thing. I can, t I can quieten this if I want, if I sort of get it like this and she gets it anxious I want to know she can think and not start swishing her tail and looking over there, yeah? I want to know that she can follow my feel when, when she's worried about that. Good girl. Okay. But I'm going to take her out and see what she does when she comes out. If she goes through one of her episodes, well, I know why she's going through it because she did something that was really big for her, but if she comes out there and starts doing what she did before because she went in there, then I know how much work we got to do, okay? She's a little bit cuddly with me. It's okay, it's better than her running off from me, but she's just thinking I'm, I'm the president and, and there's no one above me, but there is, this rope is above me, okay? The rope's more important than me. I don't want to see, I don't want to be standing out here and her, her tied up in there thinking the same thing, that's what I'm saying. Don't let them kind of crowd you in there and think that they followed you in there, think that they followed the rope in there, they followed the feel in there, okay? Yeah, that was backwards and forwards. She's see all that kicking business there? She's trying real hard to follow the feel, yet she's really emotional. So she's doing a good job of being anxious and, 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 and uh, trying to understand that... Good girl. No, no, no. You're probably more scared out here, aren't you? No, no. I don't agree with making it hard out there and easy in there. It just, it's silly. It's, it's silly because it just teaches them to get away from you and hide in there from your education. And that's really bad for connection and, 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 and the horse feeling safe with our ideas. That's just the horse figuring out that's hard out here, easy in there. That's a method, it's not horsemanship, yeah? Horse, horsemanship is horse man ship, I guess, together. Isn't it? It's not about you get in there and I'll stand out here. <laughs> That's not, not what it's meant for. Good. She gets a confidence because I helped her. That's nice she's confident with me standing here. You know, to, for her at this young stage to let, let herself stand in here while I'm there and still be connected with me is really good. And that's why that long reining I was talking about 
walking beside them so important. If we miss it, we send them in a horse float and we're out there, they want us to turn around. Don't fall asleep in there. Don't fall asleep in there. Alright, we might close the front door, what do you think? Helen, we'll close the front doors up. And we haven't put the breech and stuff behind her yet or anything. We're going to get her loaded and used to breach and pressure in this float just in case that one's just got chains. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we'll just put her in that little one and see how she goes. But this is a good, easy, big floor to work on first. And She's, she's a good learner, this man. She's uh, the, the little stock horse man, she, she came here on the back of a truck and yeah, it wasn't until sort of the end of the clinic that we that, that the owner said, oh, you know, we've got to kind of get her home. Should we hire a truck? Should we get a float? And um, So yeah, so we, we did a lesson and, and uh, to get her on the float and, and it was a, yeah, just amazing transformation to see her load on the float after we'd done the work with her. Oh, Helen, do these uh, front bits come down, don't they? Sorry? I see. Oh, did they fall off? Oh, they do come down, yeah. There you go. So you got to unload them like you load them. So what I mean by that is, I don't, I can't remember if I was loading or I was unloading her. I just keep going forwards and backwards until I remember, because I've got Alzheimer's and I can't remember. And hopefully she's got the same Alzheimer's as I do that she can't remember if you're unloading or loading. I don't remember. Just, just bear with me until I remember which way we were going. In or out, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have a clue. I know it's hard backing off there. You'd probably rather run back in here and hide, but it's okay. Yeah, that was a, that was a bit there, wasn't it? Yeah, you're doing a good job. You've got to have to find your way back. Okay, we should do a little bit more unloading before we do loading, but that's right. I can't remember which way we're going, are we? Were we loading or unloading? Can't remember. You just have to just stay with me till I remember. Oh, I know what we were doing. figured out which way I was going yet. We can't let the horse know which direction we're going in sometimes, especially when it's going off a float, because I see a lot of horses, they know the difference between on or off. They don't suffer from Alzheimer's. They go, I know you're unloading me and I'm going to unload, thanks. Oh, you're loading me now. No, I don't want to load. Okay, well, I can't remember. If I was going on or off then, were you? I can't remember. Was it on or off? And that's sort of what you do a little bit till your horse is okay with that. Now, okay, so how do we do this, Helen? We've got to get this one right. Oh, I, can I know what we do. Yeah, that's we pull that across. Yep. Ah. I've just found, I just found your fault, your fault in your float, Helen. Okay. I can't give it 100% and 100 marks, okay? <laughs> I'm locked in now. Now don't run away on me, okay, please? That'd be nice. You 
All right, little one. You did well. You got a little fright, didn't you? You banged it. I know. I know. You just hurt yourself. You didn't. You just worried yourself, didn't you? Try that again. Just remember to watch where, you, where you're going because there's a thing here you're not used to. Yeah, that's where it is. So, Lena, you, you probably more understand now why we spend a fair bit of time on leading and nothing else. Okay? You can't, you can't ask a horse to do something that you haven't offered, you off, given it tools to do, you know, understand. See, if she was frightened of the lead rope and the float, well, that would be bad, wouldn't it? You've got to have at least one of those things that she's not frightened of. Well, two of those, me and the lead rope. That's, that'd be nice too, yeah? She's not frightened of us. She's getting, yeah, see how she kind of comes in and feels okay? It means she feels like she's with someone. But the lead rope can't be the frightening thing either, all right? And that's why we've got to work on it till there's no brace, because brace means they're not comfortable with it. Brace means they're still frightened of it, okay? They still can't understand it. And though that's a big thing for her to go loading on a float, she's doing a really good job of trying. You know, I could give her 100% marks for try in that, like especially when she pulled back there, she, she got to the end and she came forward, okay? That's a real good try. Right, eh? This is where I need you guys to help me a little. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk in front of her, but I'm not going to put the chest bar in. I'm going to stop her. She's not going to run over the top of me. I'm pretty confident with that. I'm going to set this up. I'm going to lead in with her, and I want someone just to push this behind her, okay? I'm going to stand up the front of her, and I'm going to lead her into the breaching bar, all right? I know. I think she... Funny, when she goes in there, there's a little less to think about, and she kind of sits in there. They say, I don't think she's shutting down, I just think she's going in there and going like this. When she's out here, there's a lot to think about, and sometimes she gets a little bit more winky standing here than going in there. Push it over, 
Okay. Yep. Lock it. Okay. Yep. Okay, just be careful when you do it, yep. okay? Thank you. Now I'm very going to quietly back her up. I've got to be able to back her slow so she can back slowly into the breaching bar, okay? She knows it's there. Is she, she's touching it, is she? Yeah. Good. Now I'm going to push her against it, show her that it's indestructible. She's trying, but she says, oh, it's really not worth it. I'm going to lead her off it again. Good. So my job now is to tell her that she can move in here, yeah? Not just to brace up in here. So I'm teaching her to move against the breaching bar. And now I'm gonna put the chest bar back in. I'm gonna teach her to walk up to the chest bar, okay? Yep. I kinda of think I know what I'm doing. Uh, yep, I got it, found it. <coughs> So now I'm going to walk her up to the chest bar, up to the breaching bar, up to the chest bar, up to the breaching bar, up to the chest bar. Happy with that? Now I'm just going to get her in here, push and pull a bit. See if she's loose or tight. I want to know she's loose. If I pick that hind foot up there, is she loose? Loose. Do a little bit of moving around in here again. I want to see all feet move, not just two. I want to see all four feet. I'd like to see that back foot there move a little more. The one that's not not stand, the one that hasn't picked itself up there, it's just started to pick itself up there. Moving a bit, but not enough. So I'm just gonna get on the hip there. Move her a little. She's not moving it as much as I'd like her to move it. Okay, she's wanting to, to rest on it. I might teach her to move that foot a little. Come on. Put a little bit of feel there. That foot there. That's the one I want to move, yeah? I don't wanna just lean. She's not so comfortable on that side there, and some horses they'll just tuck that foot up and brace it, and they won't they won't move it over. They'll just kind of hide it there like that. And I want to know she can move that one too, not just that one. See how it hasn't moved yet. See how she's fallen over on it a bit. Yeah. She's got to move that foot, and she doesn't want to move it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the breaching bar out again, so she can take a cleaner forward step. That's it, got it. Good. No, that's all right, got it. Just want to see if she can move all her feet, that's all. That one's getting stuck again, isn't it? It's not moving. Good girl. Good girl. So I want to see that she's put a balance on every one of her feet and stood there and knows how to rebalance. She's sweating a lot, but I'm sweating too, and I'm not so stressed because it's pretty warm in here, but um, good. Righto, uh, just wait, I'll get the breaching bar down. I'll get the front bar down, and then I'll get you to take the breaching bar down. Okay, now I want to feel what she does when you put your hand there, okay? Now, because you're a Wonder Woman, she'll know that she can't push through your hand, okay? Okay. Yep. So, I'm going to back her out as if she was kind of backing out. You want to go forward again? You don't want to come No, 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 just wait a little. Wait a little till the feet get nearly to the ramp, okay? This is going to be just about where the breaching bar was. Now, right about now, put your hand there. Now, I'm going to push against you. 
Now, how 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 hard is she pushing? Uh, yes. I'm going to push a little harder. I want to see how 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 strong she thinks you are. Oh, she's saying you're pretty strong. Mm -hmm. You must have had your spinach this morning. Mm -hmm. Good. Now I'm going to walk her forward. Good. Okay. So what? What reason I pushed her into that breaching bar a few times is when she feels a barrier behind her, she thinks it's indestructible. Okay. So after a while, when we put a hand there, there's no point me putting your hand there and didn't teach her that it's not indestructible. She just walk straight through your hand. Okay. So by putting the breaching bar up and walking her into it, she stopped trying to push. She said, I can't, I can't push through it. So when you put the hand there, she'll feel that and she'll go, I can't push through it. So say for instance, you had to just put a hand there to settle her for a second, she knows she can't push through it. So if you push them to the breaching bar and they know they can't push through it, well, what's the difference between your hand and a breaching bar? If you tell them they can push through it, well, that'd be a problem. But if, you, if they didn't know any different, well, they, they're not gonna push through your hand. And you can, you can just, you can be a little kid, wouldn't matter as long as they can, yeah? It's all right now. She's, we, we, we're done. See, loading's not just about loading, it's about setting your horse up to travel. Okay? And that's the thing about it is we get them on, close the door and hope they got the rest of the tools in place and it's like a lot of them don't. I had to do a lesson once at a clinic where I had to teach a scrambler to travel home without scrambling and it was kind of an intense sort of one hour lesson. <laughs> and uh, we got through but it wasn't kind of fair for the horse in a sense. No, no fair to her with her anxiety to show her that that's not going to happen. Yeah, because uh, she'll go. That's like one of those traps. Go, it starts. It's quiet when you put me in, but then it gets noisy when you start moving. Okay. And I, and I think what we do with horses is we set them up that. Uh, that's easy. That's easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's hard. It's going to be the hardest thing you'll ever load in. It's not easy. Nothing easy about it. Okay. What's more important than making this float easy is building her confidence up, isn't it? You don't tell them the float's easy. You tell them to understand stuff and be confident, okay? Why do you think I might wave a flag in front of her? To teach her that she can follow a field or something she's worried about, yeah? And I know this might put her off loading, but two trips in that float will put her off loading. Do you understand? Ah, 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 ah. Don't do that one. You'll go underneath that and hurt yourself. Now what's she doing through that right eye? She's looking for the skate through the right eye. There. She tilts one way all the time, doesn't she? She's uh, put her thoughts through it. She's not one to look at it with the left eye, is she? Uh, the right eye. She's put, sorry, she's going through the left eye. She's not one to looking at it with the right eye. So I've got to get that right eye here. Like that. See that? That's the eye she might do a bit more thinking through. I had to swap eyes with her then.
to get her to know what she's looking at. See that? Otherwise, if she's looking at all that worry with the left, with the right eye, and got a left eye out there, well, she's not going to think about it yet. So I've got to swap eyes to get her used to that. See that there? If I let her keep looking that way and shaking that float, I won't, won't, I won't benefit her. Yeah. She can go towards worry with her left eye better than her right eye, yeah? And that might be her thinking eye. But if you give that left eye a chance to look at the horizon and the right eye looking at that, well, you're just setting her up to run off, yeah? She doesn't run off through that right eye as much, does she? You've got to know these things when you're helping them, and that's, you've got to know them when you want to steer them out of trouble, yeah? Which eye they run through, which eye they come back to, yeah? Yeah, and that's why I have a feeling she might brace on that side of her body when she's on this side of the float because the wall's there on that eye, on that eye a little too. That can that sometimes be a problem. Sometimes she might load better on that side. But we've, we've, I'm not going to swap sides all of a sudden, and uh, we've got to sort of. Girl, you just walked into a moving horse float. So that'll make you more understand, you know. Actually on Facebook, I read it a couple of days ago, someone said a comment, and it was about me trying to work on one side of a horse to get it to stop kicking. And this comment came through and I read it, and I'm like, it said horses were born even, we make them uneven. And I'm like, oh, okay. I hadn't read the research. And it's like, that's an interesting comment when you see that, they, there's eyes for doing things and there's eyes for other things and when, they rela when the horse is in a relaxed state they become more equal but when they're in a heightened state of awareness they become un more uneven because they'll go to their stronger side like we're going to if you're going to have a sword fight in a panic you're not going to go let's practice with my left hand you're going to go to your, whatever you're handed are you're going to go with your right hand aren't you you're not going to go oh today's the day to practice but when you're calm you're going to practice how to sword fight in your left hand till it's equal it's us that makes them equal. <laughs> That's the thing. It's not us that makes them unequal. It's us that helps them be equal, not makes them. It's we help them be equal. And it's through understanding them that helps them, not, not, not them. We, we, no, it's not that we make them unequal. We make them more unequal. Yes, I believe that. But they just didn't turn up equal and we, we, we fluffed it up. It's the other way around. As they, they are unequal and we've got to get it, them, them equal. <coughs> We'll give her a little spell there. She did really well. But there's a big, big probably thing there how one eye could start to think about the way, but the other eye couldn't. Okay, so sometimes you've got to hand the job over to the right eye, to the, to the one, not the right one, the, 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 the correct eye, to maybe help her through a situation, not let the other eye do it. Yep, okay. Yeah? But then, once she's done it with that eye, you've got to maybe get her to go this way into the horse float when it's wobbling.
put it on the float. We put it all in and just standing inside the float tying her up. She's in a really good frame of mind. She was, yeah, content in the float. She was, felt really good and uh, it was really nice because when we, we wanted to drive up the road, you know, she just looked like she'd, she'd, she'd done that, that journey quite a few times. So it was, it was really exciting to know that because it's uh, one of the, probably the worst places a horse will ever spend is in a, in a horse float. Um, and yeah, for her to sort of make that transformation was wonderful. The first lesson I, I did with the mare was, um, so the, the owner put a halter on her and, um, and then I just sort of went with a long rope at a distance and could feel that she hadn't done a lot of leading. So she came here on a, on a cattle truck and um, though she could be sort of turned to the side a little with a, with a neck rope, she, she, she wasn't really leading up, backing up, anything like that. So at a distance I just worked with her getting her to uh, follow a feel with a, of a rope and um, you know not not you know tune out my body language um, and, and and just listen to the rope at a distance and she got to a stage that you know we could sort of you know lay the rope on the ground and she could stand centered with the rope and then lead up with the rope and stop with the rope and th just things like that just basics that the horses need to know and um, then 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 after that we sort of you know the next lesson I started to work her on Getting her to guide past with 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 leading pressure and then and then send her out on a long line and a bit of long long reining and stuff. So, um, but I think there was there was two sort of you know long long lessons, um, and and that's also one of the one of the lessons when her owner came into play was. Um, I, I I started to feel certain areas of brace in her when when I was working with her in certain areas there was little red flags where where, where she was kind of had troubles and um, so we worked on uh, once she could sort of back up and and then go forward and and sort of just follow the feel of the, the, the long reins and different things then I got the owner to work on the specific little braces and that was just to get that sort of feel from 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 around the halter and around her her head to sort of soften through a body whether it had to go to a hind feet or a front feet and things like that and you know, so she could lower her head a little and she could back up a little and then you could sort of direct some indirect pressure through her head and, and she'd loosen in another part of the body so she wasn't sort of bracing and, and, and all lost and and, um, and, and, it, and and it was quite, for her it was quite difficult. It was, it was not like some horse would just kind of loosen up quickly. She, she had a lot of head fight and um, so we worked on that and I thought she'd made reasonable progress but then, then when we had to get to the floating um, I guess I guess the you know that was the the proof of the pudding and she was so good at following a feel and um, even under the pressure when I sort of made the float shake a bit she 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 she'd find the end of the lead she'd float forward and she she put a lot of trust in that lead and um, and and I didn't feel a pushing on me at all and and things like that so it's nice to 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 feel that transformation and and I thought for a while there you know it's I saw a red flag in there that, that I thought, oh, she's, she's, she's really troubled in this area. Um, and what I mean with red flag, it's like I see this flag pop up that go, oh, if we don't work on this, it's gonna come up later and it's gonna be bigger and it's gonna get bypassed in, in, you know, and I see a lot of things where it gets bypassed. And so anyway, we worked on it and it was so nice to see it make a change. And uh, re really, you know under pressure follow a feel and put put trust in that feel and but also put trust in in the person and you know so so you know I was standing there at the float and that was a big a big thing for her when I stood quietly she'd come in quietly and stand with me and, and you could feel her feeling on me and um, yeah it was nice nice 